unfortunately their camera batteries were dead so we don't really know what's going on in here and uh, I didn't ha I didn't have any way to look at the SD card to see what we got before they went dead but the bait was mostly gone they said the barrel was pretty well full when they came in here on Sunday this is Wednesday and uh, it was about two-thirds gone so um, it's it's being worked. Hopefully there's some daylight activity in here. They have told me that there's a couple of really nice bears in here, including one tanker. So that's the one I'm hoping for. Kind of feel like I should apologize for leaving you hanging on that last video like that. Uh, this is going to be a really, really different video, but first I want to explain what happened with the remainder of that evening hunt uh, that we left uh, in the last vlog post. So I didn't see anything until right at the last moments of shooting light, I saw a bear coming from my left, coming up the hill, and uh, one of the things I always do is reach up and turn the camera on and I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough light to get a shot off but I reached up to my right turned the video camera on when the bear walked behind a large tree and, uh, and it didn't come out from behind that there was a little clump of trees and um, it was getting darker and darker and I'm looking in the viewfinder of the video camera and I can see the white barrel, but I'm like, man, I, I don't have enough light to video. I barely have enough light to shoot. And then all of a sudden, I heard a noise directly behind me. And uh, the bear was around behind my tree somehow. And when that noise happened, a cub went up a tree right beside me. So I knew I was dealing with a sow and a cub. And uh, it started to get dark on me. And so finally, I just had to turn on my light. Well, I waited till the cub came down uh, from the tree, and then I turned on my light and got out of there. So that was the way that that, in, that evening ended. That was only the second evening I was able to hunt bears, and that turned out to be the last evening that I would be able to hunt bears. What happened on the remainder of this hunt, uh, let's just say the next day things really took a turn for the bazaar. And... Uh, I'm just going to walk you through what happened and just tell you about it. Um, I, I don't know how else to put it. I don't want to offend people. I don't want to hurt any feelings, but I got a couple thousand people, several thousand people that are watching this and I owe them an explanation of why I'm at home a week early and I didn't get a moose or a bear. But I got to begin at the beginning so you understand the, the, the package and, and how to frame this. So first of all, last year in the spring I hunted with George as an outdoor writer and YouTuber um, I'm not sure how to put this but there's a lot of opportunity to hunt and promote outfitters um, without 
paying for the hunts. So, you know, you, maybe you think I'm rich or something that I get to go on all these hunts, the bear hunts especially. Um, I've been on hunts all over Canada where the tourism departments in Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan paid for my hunts. I've got a lot of outfitters that invite me, come and hunt with me, write a story about it, do your YouTube videos, it won't cost you anything, blah, blah, blah. So I've been selective about that. And I've been able to hunt a lot of different places and uh, at no charge. Usually I have to buy a tag and have to get there. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, they all cost money, but it's a fraction of what I would normally pay. So I, I'm just telling you that so you understand how the whole package works here. So um, I started working with George last spring because, um, you know, there's a lot of people that wouldn't go to Canada during COVID and they wouldn't get the shot and so forth. And I told George, you got, you know, you got a spring bear hunt on native land. And if, uh, if, if I come out there, if I get a bear, you're going to get a lot of calls. Uh, you're going to book a lot of hunts. And so we worked out an arrangement where I flew out there, I killed a bear. Um, there were, I mean, organization-wise, there was kind of a few red flags. It was a little disorganized and stuff, but I, I got a bear, and I only got a small bear. George called me up, and he goes, man, that was, that was awesome. You know, when the article came out in Bear Hunting Magazine, and people saw your YouTube video, and you, you know, he says, I, I got a lot of calls. I booked 12 hunters, and I also booked eight others for a friend of mine. And so there was a total of 20 hunts booked. And when I was there the first time, he was talking a lot about his moose hunts and how much he loved to hunt moose. And he had two moose tags a year for tribal land and he had really good land for moose hunting. And you know, it, it takes 20 years or more sometimes to draw a moose tag in Maine. And he said, well, you can, you know, I can get two tags a year through the tribe. And if you're interested in doing that, it's a $10,000 hunt. And I'm like, well, Let's, let's get this bear hunt out of the way and see how it goes. And so after booking 12 hunters, then he's all about this moose hunt again. He's like, you know, you just come out here, buy the tag, and uh, pay for the lodging, and uh, I'll, I'll do the moose hunt for nothing. So that's how this sort of developed, and we ended up turning it into a two-week hunt that would be a fall bear hunt and a fall moose hunt for two weeks. And that we'd have plenty of time to do both of them. Well, this moose tag is good for either firearm or archery. And so George had told me that he'd be carrying a firearm if a moose hung up too far out or if it got late in the hunt or whatever and I decide I want to go ahead and shoot it with a gun, then I could just take his rifle and shoot the moose. And so that um, that had some appeal to me. I really wanted to do it with a bow, but uh, I really wanted to get a moose also. It all looked like it was going to be great. And then a couple months before the hunt was about to happen, George called me up and he says, um, Hey, I need $3,000 for your tag. And I'm like, $3,000? And he said, Yeah, the, the, the moose tag is $3,000. I'm like, Wow, that's kind of a surprise. Um, I had no idea it would be that much. I thought it would kind of just be like a regular moose tag for non-resident in Maine. And I, I said, you know, I got to reconsider this. That's more money than I don't know if I can come up with that kind of money to do something like this. And I realize you're giving me the hunt at no charge, but I got travel expenses and I got lodging and everything like that. And all of a sudden, you know, this hunt's getting out of reach for me financially. And he said, well, there's another tribe, and they've got tags. He says, I could apply for one of their tags, and it's only 2500 They They sell the tags for 2500 So I said, well, check into that and get back to me. And, and I thought about it for a while. He got back to me and said, I can get the $2,500 tag. And I thought, you know, it's a hunt of a lifetime. I mean, I've always wanted to hunt moose, and, and I'm. it's going to be a tremendous sacrifice for me to be able to spend this kind of money on a hunt. But... Um, I'm gonna do it and I sent him a check for 2500 and he got the tag and I'm just thinking I hope there's no more surprises like that well uh, that was just the beginning of the surprises unfortunately well the second surprise was that I was loading coolers in the back of the truck when uh, the day before I was gonna leave and I was thinking about you know how I was gonna get this moose home and how much weight I was gonna have and how much meat I was gonna have how many coolers do I need and I called up George and I said, is there a, like a processor there in that town where I could just have them 
butcher the moose and freeze it and then I could just you know load packages in a coolers instead it would take up a lot more uh, or take up a lot less room and he said well we can take it to a processor and then he'll just give you your half of the moose and I said my what do you mean my half of the moose and he said well you know um, you get to keep half the moose and the tribe keeps the other half for their food pantry well, that was a surprise. Um, I didn't know that until the day before I was about to leave on this moose hunt. When I arrived, uh, we were staying in a really nice cabin, and uh, George told me it's $290 per week for, th for each person, and there's three of us, and uh, so I'm thinking, well, we're going to be there two weeks. That's, you know, that's, that's a lot of money, but it's still a whole lot less than what this hunt would cost otherwise, and George has got a really good reputation as a guide um, and, and getting people moose and everything. So, so we started hunting. Um, all of the baits were across the lakes. We had to put a boat in to go to the bear baits. Um, we, what you've seen so far and the previous vlog takes us up to Wednesday night. Okay, now Thursday morning we went out moose hunting planning to come back and uh, hopefully bear hunt that night now there was a hurricane moving up the east coast and uh, it was predicted to uh, create a lot of wind and rain especially wind and i was concerned that we weren't going to be able to get across the lake in a small boat um, but we were going to try to moose hunt in the morning and we'd been hunting moose hunt in the rain every single day and uh, it was the same way again on thursday morning uh, we hunted in the rain and that morning he said oh by the way we're gonna have to move out of this cabin i'm like what do you mean he said well he's the the owner of the camp has somebody else booked in his cabin for the weekend but it's okay he's got another place for us to move into and then we can move back into this cabin after the weekend and i'm like well that sucks because we just filled up the refrigerator with food i went and bought a bunch of groceries and stuff like that and we were all settled in there and everything and abdon um the the he's kind of a slash guide part-time partner or whatever uh he's a real good guy and uh he had to, he's actually running for state senate and he had some campaign um promises to keep i guess some places that he had to be so he left early thursday morning well after hunting thursday morning we came back to the cabin and there is trucks and trailers and nine guys standing on the porch of the cabin and the cleaners had taken all our stuff out of the cabin and thrown it all out on the porch and it was raining uh, most of the stuff was just kind of all in a jumble they boxed some of it up it was a covered porch but uh, some of it was getting rained on a little bit and George was like oh, I didn't know we had to move out today um, I, I when he said he had people coming in for the weekend I didn't know that meant we had to move out Thursday morning he got on the phone he made a call to another resort that had cottages and they said they could get us in so we packed all our stuff up and moved over to these other cottages and it was definitely a downgrade it was a I'll just be graceful and say that it was a rustic cabin it was rough I think the mattress on my bed was older than I am uh, it was rough but uh, same price and so I went back to pay at the uh, Sally Mountain Cabins, which is where we originally were staying, and uh, the owner said, I don't know what's going on here, but George knew from the beginning that you were only there for four nights. He booked four nights, and it's $48 a night per person for four nights, and I told him from the beginning that he had to be out Thursday morning. So I paid and uh, went back to the other resort, and George said, well, you know, I was already planning to, we we're going to spend the second week at this resort. And so I already had this booked and I just called him up and he let us come in a few days early. So things were getting pretty weird at this point. So early in the hunt, George was not carrying the rifle. And um, I said, well, you know, are, are you going to carry the rifle so in case a moose hangs up out of range so I can shoot it with the rifle? And he goes, well, you can't shoot it with a rifle until the rifle season opens October 1st. I'm like, well, October 1st is 
the 14th day of my two-week hunt. So we, we went out and moose hunted that evening and we didn't see anything. Well, Friday morning, it started to get pretty windy. He says, I, I think I know a spot where we can get in and call and the moose will probably be pretty close. They're not going to be able to hear very far distance with this wind. And But during the day, they're predicting that it's supposed to get up to 40 mile an hour winds, even gust to 50 mile an hour winds. So uh, we knew, obviously, we're not going to get across the lake to bear hunt. We're not going to be able to moose hunt. We're going to be we're going to be in the cabin for probably a day and a half until it starts to settle down. So we get out, we, we got up at four, we've been getting up at four o'clock every morning. We went out there and uh, we, we uh, parked uh, before daylight. We walked into the spot. Um, we hiked in a ways and then uh, got set up and we're all ready to uh, um, start calling as it's just getting legal shooting light. And I drew my bow and kind of went around like this, you know, to uh, kind of make a, make sure I've got clearance to uh, to shoot if a moose comes in. And when I let my bow down, it just blew up. And we had walked all the way in and it's right at legal shooting light. And this is the last chance we're going to have to hunt for the, for the next couple of days. So at this point, uh, there's nothing we can do. I mean, I don't have a bow to shoot. There's no point in even calling. So we had to just hike back out and uh, drove five hours round trip to the nearest archery shop with a bow press and once we got back the wind is really howling I'm like man you know the the boat you guys where's the boat did did it is it like tied to a dock or is it in a cove or a harbor or something like that because man it's really screaming out there if that boat's sitting on the lake anchored or up on shore or something you could potentially have a problem so we went down to check the boat and the boat was sunk um, the wind had been, they had just pulled it up on the beach and the wind was coming from the northwest and had had washed waves over the transom until it had completely sunk and the gas tank was floating upside down and it was a mess. So we spent the afternoon getting that boat freed up, getting it unsunk. Uh, the plug had been, it was banged around on the bottom so much that the plug had come out and we couldn't find it. And so we had to go to a hardware store and buy another plug and we finally got that working because they, they didn't have one the right size. Uh, and then we just turned the boat so the bow was into the waves because there's no way we could get it loaded on a trailer in, the, in those waves. So uh, we, we just pulled it up on shore as much as we could, turned the bow into the waves and hoped for the best. And then I didn't think there was much point in going out hunting that night, but George was like, let's go. We can, you know, let's just go call and... Uh, so we went out and called for a while. Well, we had a pretty rough day today. Started out in this exact spot this morning at right at daylight. Got set up. Decided to decided to draw my bow and just kind of do a move around to make sure I had a clear shot. And when I let my bow down, apparently some little stick got in here and derailed my bow. So right at legal first legal shooting light, I'm standing here where we drove an, over an hour and walked through, I don't know how long, to get back in here, got set up, just ready to call, and I'm standing here with a derailed bow. So we spent the morning driving about almost five hours round trip, getting a string put back on my bow, which is something that Matthews doesn't want to hear because they actually this new V3X actually comes with a um, portable bow press that you can actually restring your bow with. And I just happened to leave mine at home. So <clears throat> we're back out here this afternoon. George is going to do some calls. It's like super windy because there's this hurricane off the coast. And uh, George is going to bring one right to me and I can talk. I don't even have to whisper because it's pretty noisy in here, but we're going to uh, call really loud with electronic collar and hopefully reach out there far enough to bring a moose in. So maybe a really tough day will get a little better. Sorry for the dead moose. But it was so windy that it was obviously not much point in it. We decided to just go 
uh, get in the truck and drive up and down the roads and we'd been seeing some moose. I actually saw eight moose on this hunt. Unfortunately, all of them I saw from the front seat of a pickup. And uh, since we'd been seeing moose crossing the, the roads and stuff like that, I thought, well, you know, if we drive the last how, half hour of legal shooting light, maybe we'll see a moose and try to sneak up on it in this wind or something. Well, we didn't see anything except a cow moose in the road. And uh, so that was the end of Friday. So Saturday morning, once again, we're up at 4 o'clock. We went out there and we were going to walk into a spot and the trees were just going like this. I mean, it was just like 40 mile an hour winds and I'm thinking this is really ridiculous. And the shooting light is about six and we got out there about five. So we just sat in the truck and uh, I just fell asleep again for a little while. And then at, at shooting light, he's like, let's just go drive the road some more. So that's what we did. Didn't see anything. So Saturday morning after hunting, um, we just drove the, the back roads for three, four hours and then headed back to camp. And I'm like, man, the wind's still howling. We better go check on the boat. And we went down and the, sure enough, the boat had turned sideways and the waves had washed it up on the shore. It was crashing up against the rocks and uh, it was full of water again. So he called Abdon and Abdon's like, I got I to gotta come up and get it. Um, we were going to try to load it on the trailer, but I hooked up the trailer and the trailer broke when I was hauling it over to the resort where the boat was parked. And so we couldn't get it on the trailer. So Abdon says, I'm going to come up and um, I'll uh, bring tools so we can put the bunks back on the trailer and uh, fix the broken weld and uh, we'll get that boat loaded up. George just stayed around camp uh, cleaning out his truck and organizing the bear baits and stuff like that. And he was saying, you know, hey, we got we to gotta go out to the camp and get more bait. For the bears and I keep saying man we gotta you know these bear baits have been completely neglected they don't have cameras on them the ones that do have cameras with dead batteries we don't know what's going on out there uh, it, they're just completely neglected the barrels are empty uh, we, we got to do something about these bear baits we got to figure out a way to get across that lake so we can get cameras on these baits and everything like that and he's like yeah yeah we're gonna go out to the camp and get more bait um, then, and then uh, so this is Saturday morning and uh, well, Abdon came back um, Saturday afternoon and the waves are just screaming. And we got the boat bailed out and George uh, was working on uh, cleaning out his truck and stuff. So I just went down there to help Abdon. We got the boat on the trailer. I said something to the effect that I've got a trail camera out there on one of these baits. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get back to it. and if uh you know if we're going to get these baits going so i actually have a chance to shoot a bear and abdon says well today's the last day of bear season i'm like what do you mean he said no today bear season ends today didn't he tell you that and i'm like i'm supposed to be on a two-week hunt for bear and moose and the bear season ends on the fifth day of a 14-day hunt how can how can that be but it's unbelievable. So at this point, I'm, I'm not really sure what to do. Things have, went, have gone so ridiculously bad with the really bad weather, all the rain, with the wind that makes it basically impossible to call moose. And finding out that my bear hunt was done, I mean, I had two magazines that were expecting a story of a moose and bear hunt combination. I got all these YouTube viewers, 30,000 subscribers. People are expecting me to do a moose and bear hunt combination. And now there's no bear hunt and the moose hunt's not going well at all. So I go back and... Um, I'm like, George, let's, you know, we got to figure out how to salvage this moose hunt. And uh, the wind is really blowing, but um, well, let's, let's go out and just see if we can make something happen. And so uh, we went out, drove, um, and incredibly, we saw a bull moose walk out on the road right in front of a moose crossing sign right in front of us. And I happened to have a camera in my lap, so I got a little video of it. 
but we got out there and started driving the back roads and then uh, the wind was actually starting to die down just a little bit and um, George is thinking I got a spot up on top of a, an area over here where we can get back in there and uh, it might be worth uh, calling. So he's just driving along on uh, on these forest roads and on trails, they're more like four-wheeler trails that we're driving a truck down, folding the mirrors back and scratching up the sides of his truck and he's talking about something I don't know, he, he's a talker, he's got a lot to talk about and it's mostly interesting and I really I enjoy his company. But he's just talking away and just drives right into a big mud hole. And man are we stuck and uh, we had gone by a cabin a few miles back and uh, there was a generator running and uh, so somebody some other moose hunters uh, tribal moose hunters were at that cabin we could not get the truck out and uh, he says well it's okay I got to come along and I got a 200 foot tow strap and we tried to we, I hooked up the strap and we pulled the come along out and it's broke and we, we kind of jerry-rigged it to work and then the handle bent on it. It's like a come along that would probably work for a four-wheeler, but it won't work for a truck, especially with a thousand pounds of half a 55-gallon drum of peanut butter in the back and a bunch of jugs of fryer oil. And I mean, there's 800 to 1,000 pounds of stuff in the back of this truck and he's completely high centered. The front end is buried in the mud. So I said, our only chance of getting this out of here is if we unload the back of the truck and get some of this weight off of it. So we unloaded the truck and we still could not get it to move. And then I said, there's a cabin, it's quite a ways back there, but I mean, we're gonna have to walk. There's not, we don't have any other choice. And he said, oh, it's only a quarter mile. And I'm like, George, it's gotta be at least a couple miles. Well, it was three and a half miles and uh, halfway there, it was dark. And I was walking quite a bit faster than George. so. You know, by halfway there, I he was I couldn't even see him behind me. He's he's lagging way behind, and I had a lot of time to think. And as I was thinking about what to do with this situation, and uh, and here's kind of the way it went. Um, George is expecting me to do a couple magazine articles and a YouTube video promoting him saying what a great guide he is um, saying all these positive things about him that would bring him business the same thing as I did when I shot a bear with him and I'm I just don't feel at this point like I can do that to my viewers or to my own conscience and you have to understand that George is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He's a really good hunter. He's a good moose hunter. He's ambitious. He works hard. He really, he really gets joy from helping people achieve their dreams. And uh, he's just a genuinely nice, likable guy. But the organization and the business aspect of this was unbelievable. And... So my thought process is basically that if I continue to hunt with him, and even if I would get a moose, which I really, really want to do, I mean, this is a lifelong dream for me. If I would continue to hunt with him, I would be deceiving him into thinking that I'm going to do something positive about this whole experience that will help him book more moose and bear hunters. And I'm just not willing to be deceptive in that way. And I've got no choice left but to just go home. And uh, there's, there's a thing my dad said to me, I think when I was a teenager, and it pops up at these worst possible times like this. And he said, son, honesty is not the best policy. Honesty is the only policy. So I walked to the cabin we got help. They were eager to help us and pretty cool guys. They pulled us out. I'm sure he noticed I was pretty quiet on the way home. And when we got back to the camp, I just said, George, I'm, I'm packing up and leaving in the morning. So that's 
not the way I expected this hunt to end, but I learned a lot from it. I could have done better diligence on some of this stuff. Some of, some of it's my responsibility. I put too much trust in, uh, in someone that I didn't know very well. And I know that George is going to watch this and probably have his feelings hurt, and that sucks because I really like him. I, if he lived near me, I'd probably be good friends with him. I just, he's just, there's so much to like about him, and he's a really, really good hunter. And he knows the woods, and he knows moose, and he can call. He's a phenomenal moose caller. It's just that this situation just wasn't meant to be. So um, that's all I got. Um, you know, sorry it worked out like this, and uh, I'm at peace with my decision, and I'm just ready to move on. And I took about a $5,000 beating on this thing, between the tag and the lodging, the travel, food, everything. Uh, I I haven't figured it out. Somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000, I lost on this, but. Plus, I lost the opportunity to do two magazine articles that I was expecting. So, uh, anyway, I talked too long, but um, it is what it is, and uh, we will.